Live, local, late breaking. This is WDSU News at 5. Now at 5, the excitement is building as the clock ticks down to kickoff. That's right, so excited. Here's a live look inside the Superdome where there will be a showdown. The Saints taking on the Cowboys in just about two hours. And the fan fever, it's pretty high. The Houdat Nation ready for the Saints to march in hungry and for Dallas to gallop out with a big L. Gallop on out. Our <laughs> special Cox Saints on 6 countdown to kickoff special starts right now. Get ready. Come on, y'all. Get ready to make some noise as the black and gold rises up and we stand behind them boys. It's a countdown to a celebration for the whole Houdat Nation. So let's play it true. See them through on WDSU. Get ready for WDSU Saints on Six with Fletcher Mackle, Sharif Ishak, Coach Jim Mora, and former Saints team captain Roman Harper. Black and gold nation, let's go, 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 go. So black and gold. Good evening and welcome to our Cox Saints on Six countdown to kickoff coverage. Everyone, I'm Fletcher Mackle alongside Sharif Ishak, former Saints head coach Jim Mora and former Saints team captain and Super Bowl champion in a sharply dressed Roman <laughs> Harper. I mean, we got a great game tonight. The last four times the Saints and Cowboys played, guess what? They split the series. They've exchanged wins with losses in Roman. Not good news for the black and gold. Great news. Number 98 is back, Sheldon Rankins. Well, at the end of the day, that means all hands on deck. Sheldon Rankins is going to be able to add some penetration up front, help with this pass rush side. I think that's one thing they've been kind of missing lately, but it's going to help this team, and they're going to need everybody tonight against a tough Dallas offensive line. Jim, your thoughts on the overall matchup? 2-1 Saints, 3-0 Cowboys. Well, I think it's going to be a tough matchup. I think if we had Drew Brees playing tonight, it would be different, but the way it is right now, I think Dallas has a, a, an edge on the Saints. I really do. The Dallas has a really good offensive team. Three really good players at three important positions. Dak Prescott at quarterback, Elliott, uh, uh, Elliott at running back, and then Amari Cooper, wide receiver. They're ranked third in the, in, in the NFL as far as total offense is concerned, not including today. They're a good offensive team. You mentioned Drew Brees. The man replacing Drew Brees is Teddy Bridgewater. Earlier this week, I asked him, will the Saints be less conservative on offense? They were conservative against the Seattle Seahawks. Will they open it up tonight against the Dallas Cowboys? I think uh, the thing with, with football now is everyone gets enamored with, with numbers and being, seeing the ball push down the field. And when those opportunities come, you know, we want to take them and we want to take advantage of them. But at the end of the day, it's about winning football games. And that's my job. I just want to help this team win football games and the rest will take care of itself. And Teddy Bridgewater and the Saints offense will be challenged on Sunday night by Dallas. The Cowboys have outscored their opponents 96 to 44 this season. And remember last year, the Dallas defense suffocated Drew Brees and company. They ended New Orleans' 10 game winning streak, beating the black and gold 13 to 10. They're playing smart football. Uh, they're great on third downs right now. And they're getting off the field. And when you can do that, uh, you're going to give your, op your offense more opportunities to, to score points like they've been doing this year. So they're playing good football and they're hot. And uh, we understand that it's going to be a, a battle. Last year was a physical game and we expect the same this year. All right, Jim, I think four years ago was the game when I asked you about Drew Brees dinking and dunking. Now it's Teddy Bridgewater's turn. I know how much you hate the words t uh, dinking and dunking. But will that work tonight? What more do you need to see from Teddy Bridgewater against this very solid defense? Well, first of all, I don't hate the words dinking and dunking. Whatever it takes to win, that's what I'm for. They dinked and dunked last week, and they won a big game in Seattle, okay? I know they would rather have longer passes to help them get down the field, but as long as they can move the ball down the field, keep the offense of Dallas off the field, they're going to be, and, and it helps them win. They'll go with it. Roman, you played in this building. Teddy Bridgewater, his first ever NFL start was here in 2014 when he was a rookie. You were, I believe, here. Or actually, you were in Carolina. There we go. That's true. You're <laughs> right. That's right. But still, your thoughts on Teddy Bridgewater is someone who you've seen in the NFL before. Well, not only that, but this guy's done it before. And, you know, everybody got down after the first Rams appearance, but he hasn't played in so long. And you got to be able to understand, like, that game plan was not meant for him. This week, last week, it's all for him. And they understand that. He's the leader of this team right Right now leading this offense having great command I expect big things tonight I think they're going to take some shots downfield I think they're going to try to do things that and they're trying to be explosive go over the top and do some other things and they're going to open it up for Teddy and at least 
back this defense off of them so they don't stack the box on this run game. All right, from the Saints' backup quarterback to the team's third-string quarterback, a fan favorite, Taysom Hill, will play some snaps at quarterback, and maybe he plays more at quarterback depending on what Sean Payton wants to do this evening. And speaking of Taysom, he's part of our Saints on Six team this season. Taysom joins Carly McCord right now for more analysis on tonight's game. Here with Taysom Hill, and tonight I want to go ahead and rewind to last season because the Cowboys are really the only team that slowed you all down. What is it about them that presents such a big challenge, and what can you say about their defense so far this season? Yeah, I mean, defensively, they're, they're a really good team, and I think their front seven is really the core um, of that football team. you got Demarcus Lawrence up front. Their linebacking core is really good. And I think as you go back to last year, they were able to put pressure on us, get the ball out of our hands a little bit sooner than we wanted to. Um, and as you watch the tape, that's something that they've been able to do consistently this year. And um, it, it, they're really good defense, and uh, it'll be a good challenge for us this week. And we don't think that you're playing defense, although it wouldn't surprise <laughs> us if you do. But if you could just go ahead and tell us, what have you seen so far this year from Dak Prescott, Zeke Elliott, Amari Cooper? What do they bring to the table? What makes them so special? Yeah, well, they, they obviously have weapons, right? And you hit, you, you hit the nail on the head with uh, Ezekiel Elliott, Amari Cooper, and um, to, to sum up the way Dak has played so far this season has just been efficient. He's been really efficient and I think they've done a really nice job of putting him in really good situations where they're a really well balanced team and so um, and then Dak has made really all the right decisions and uh, it, it's it's tough to stop a team that's as balanced as those guys are offensively and um, again they've been really efficient at doing it. Let's switch gears to basketball a little bit. I know that you've been able to spend some time with Zion and you get to see those guys at the facility, your neighbors, the Pelicans, the New Orleans Pelicans start their training camp tomorrow. How excited are you for this season and what do you expect from them? Uh, I'm super excited. Um, like you said, we, we've had a little opportunity to get to know those guys, been around the, the coaching staff there, and I, I feel like all the vibes there are so positive. I think they, they have a clear vision of, of who they are as a team and what they want to accomplish. And I think, which is rare to be able to say, you know, going into training camp as you start training camp, I think that's kind of what you're trying to establish. But um, I, I feel like those guys, they just have really good vibes. Um, and I expect them to come out and, and play, play hard. Um, and I, I think it's going to be a hungry team as they're all together for the first time. And um, I, I think they're going to be really good this year. Taysom Hill, good luck tonight. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Guys, we'll go ahead and send it back to you. Now that we've heard from both Teddy and Taysom, let's talk Drew Brees. There's widespread pet speculation that perhaps number nine will lead tonight's Who Dat chant, although he's recovering from a thumb surgery. He will be back tonight, but on the sidelines. That's right. Alvin Kamara led the Houdat chant the first game of the season, the Monday night game against the Houston Texans. That was a thriller. And speaking of AK-41, he leads the NFL in missed tackles this season. Yeah, Fletcher, he broke close to 20 tackles last week in the win mm. over the Seattle Seahawks. No, you're very impressed there with mm. number 41. The Dallas Cowboys can't let that happen tonight. Jalen Smith really thinks that AK-41 is an awesome player, especially at breaking tackles. That leads us to our Rouse's recipe for success. Alvin Kamara staying red hot. He's a guy that can make um, every cut. Um, he can make every route. Um, he's consistent. And, and that's just what you see in a, in a player that's had another year uh, to really grow. And for us, it's just about being on our on our keys. He's definitely one of the backs that can do it all. I mean, he's basically a receiver that can carry the ball. Um, he, he can run routes. Uh, he can run the ball between the tackles. I mean, he's, he's like the, the – he can do everything. All right, Roman, the Saints are 8-0 when Alvin Kamara touches the ball 20 or more times. Will he touch the ball 20 or more times tonight? Does he need to touch it 20 or more times? He definitely needs to touch it more than that. I'm thinking more around 30 to 35. You know, Oof. Latavius Murray has not really got his footing ready in this offense. I mean, they have to lean on Alvin Kamara. Teddy Bridgewater, Michael Thomas, Alvin Kamara, and you can't get enough of that combination right now. Ted, Ted getting going deep, but right now, I'm running the ball to, to as much as I can with Alvin Kamara, and I'm throwing it to him when he's not, when he's not handed off to him. 
Jim, let me follow up on that. Could Alvin Kamara be overused, or are teams going to start focusing so much on him that it's going to be hard to find new and creative ways to get him the ball? Well, I think one night, I think like Roman says, if he carries the ball 30 to 35 times a night tonight, a big win, a big mm -hmm. game for the, for the Saints, that's fine. Yes. Over the course of a season, if he did that, yeah, it might be a wear and tear on him. Yeah, I think so. So we will see what Alvin Kamara does tonight. Again, Alvin Kamara staying hot. That is our Rouse's recipe for success this evening. More analysis with Jim Mora and Roman Harper coming up in a minute. Right now, though, we want to talk about faith in football and how they are both big factors tonight. So we're going to send it back to Gina and Sherman in the studio, and we're going to talk about how one player was recently fined for his faith. Tell us about that, guys. Thanks, Fletcher. It is no secret that Demario Davis is filling in on the pregame hype. Speed 12 Drew Brees is out. That's right. He did a great job. And this weekend, Demario revealed on social media that he was actually fined $7,000 for the headband that he wore last Sunday as it violates the league's uniform policy. We'll have to wait tonight to see what he's going to do because it's still unknown if he'll wear the man of God headband again. All right, but speaking of faith, you know, we are the Houdat Nation, so we believe we're people of faith and sundown today is special as it marks the start of Rosh Hashanah. We know that's Jewish New Year and get this one local rabbi created a, a game plan just for our Jewish Houdats. We have some images in of an early Rosh Hashanah service. It was happening near the Superdome at a law firm law firm on Poydra Street so that our Jewish fans can observe the start of the holiday without missing a down in the dome tonight. The rabbis are wearing white Saints jerseys with the words rabbi written on the back. Pretty nice. All right, the special service is going on until six and then those fans will head over to the game. And for more on the weather that the fans will experience, let's head over to meteorologist Daniel Graves. Well, we're definitely uh, seeing some warm temperatures out there. Thankfully, no rainfall for all the tailgating that's going on. But again, temperatures have been climbing into the upper 80s to the low 90s today. But if you're heading out to the game over the next several hours, we'll be looking at some pretty nice weather. But you can see there is some rainfall out there. Mainly it's been across Terrebonne and Lafouche parishes this afternoon as it continues to move off toward the northwest. You can see that rain a little bit heavy at times. Otherwise, you're seeing temperatures in the upper 80s to the low 90s, a little cooler where you have the rainfall down toward Homa and Galliano. So this evening toward kickoff time in the upper 80s, heat index still around 93. By the end of the game, it'll be a nice night. Temperature still into the low 80s. You see the clouds and the rainfall moves out, and we're looking at some nice weather as we go into the start of the week, but still going to be hot with temperatures remaining in the low 90s for the next seven days. More Saints on 6 coverage coming up after the break. Stay with us. Cox Saints on 6 countdown to kickoff coverage is brought to you by Cox, bringing us closer. Rouse's, official grocer of the New Orleans Saints. And Law Tigers, Louisiana's motorcycle lawyers.
Welcome back to our Cox Saints on Six countdown to kickoff coverage. Jim and Roman, a lot of craziness going on, a lot of great festivities going around this football weekend. How special is this city, Jim, when they have a lot of festivities surrounding a big game like this? Well, it seems to me like they have a lot of festivities all the time, you know? <laughs> but they love their football team, first of all. There's a big game tonight, so they're into that. But they love to party, they love to drink, they love to have parades. They're a fun place to be. <laughs> <laughs> Your thoughts, Roman? I mean, look, only thing I'm missing out on is Fried Chicken Fest. i got to get back <laughs> to one of those. Other than that, I'm with it. I love everything about it. You missed it by a weekend. If only this <laughs> game could have been last weekend. Now, for more on how the passionate Kudat Nation is getting ready for tonight's big game, how they got ready this weekend, and how they continue to get ready, let's go to WDSU's Jennifer Crockett. This weekend has been Saints Sane, and it really all started off on Friday with Saints legends and owner Gail Benson visiting several high school football games. But the momentum ramped up big time last night at the ninth annual Gleason Graw, where for the first time there was a fun run and a walk around the Superdome. Several players, current and former, were in attendance, including Cam Jordan, Chris Reese, and Thomas Morstead. Now, as fans were rolling into Gleason Graw, there was a special vehicle in park that you'll actually see outside of the Superdome right now. I'm talking about the Sunday night football bus. It is decked out with all the bells and whistles and a very cool interactive experience. It even includes a locker room replica of sorts in which fans from both teams can take pictures with replica helmets. Of course, every selfie you take, you really should say, who dat? In the studio, I'm Jennifer Crockett, who dat? All right, Jennifer, that's right. Who that? You know the Cowboy fans in town. They trying to chant, say the who that chant. I just can't even believe it. They've been doing this all weekend long. Yeah, and they've even taken to Bourbon Street. Yes, Bourbon Street. Yes, the old blue. They've been spotted all along the infamous street, and yesterday Cowboys fans even tried, keyword <laughs> tried, to have a second line. The team's owner, Jerry Jones, was even spotted on Bourbon Street. <laughs> oh no, but we know the real fans of Who That Nation, they party it outside the dome right now. Tailgate parties happening as we speak. You can see the fried chicken right there. Many started cooking already early this morning. Oh, that's right. Okay, well, we continue to count down the kickoff coming up. Two members of our Saints on 16 demonstrate critical plays that make the Cowboys no team to sleep on.
Welcome back to our countdown to kickoff coverage, everyone. You're looking at tonight's starting quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater, warming up. It's Saints versus Dallas Cowboys. Kickoff at 7 o'clock here in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. It is going to be a thriller this evening. So pay attention. Tonight's game features the number one and number three offensive lines in the NFL. So like most games, how they do could determine the outcome of this game. And that's right, the big guys up front, but also there are tons of playmakers in this game. And that leads us to our Cox, where speed makes a difference segment. Here are our colleagues, Sharif Ishak and Roman Harper. All right, the Saints are looking for some revenge over the Dallas Cowboys after the Cowboys ended their 10-game winning streak last season. All right, this week's edition of Roman the Secondary, the Dallas Cowboys offense. Roman? No, we're going to explain why this Dallas Cowboys offense is so hard to tough and why Amari Cooper ends up with so many one-on-one -on -one matchups and what makes him so good at, uh, at winning those matchups. All right. Ready? All right. Kendall's going to play Zeke Elliott. All right, there we go. Eating it up all day. I'm going to be Amari Cooper. The ball's inside. You're a cornerback, Marshawn Lattimore, Eli Apple, whichever one. What makes Amari Cooper so dangerous is all the work that he does within the first two yards of the line of scrimmage. So he's going to come off. Boom, you can hear. He's going to beat this guy. So from here, he's already behind me. Now you're playing catch up as a defensive back. That's never in a position you want to be. Now you can't eliminate routes. You don't know which way he's going. You're just trying to catch up with me. He's so good at the line of scrimmage. Now, as a defender, you're going to be Amari Cooper. I'm going to explain how do you want to defeat this or nullify his, his greatness at the line of scrimmage. Boom, I'm coming off. I want to stay square as possible using my hands. The longer I can keep him on the line of scrimmage, the more time it takes for the D lineman to be able to get there to the pass rush. And also, timing is money. Also, now Dak Prescott is also worried about taking too long. He has to go to a second or third option. That is how you help slow down Amari Cooper. Where did Cooper go to school? The University of Alabama. Roll Tide. Back to you. There we go, Roman. Thank you very much. That was our Cox, where speed makes a different segment. Coach, quickly, your thoughts on Amari Cooper, a really big playmaker in this game tonight. Amari Cooper reminds me a lot of Michael Thomas. He gets open. He's always open, and the quarterback finds him, and he catches the football. He's got great hands. He's a heck of a player. Can you believe the Raiders traded him? I know I can't believe it. Well, I do believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything is possible with the Raiders. Coming up, more analysis with Jim Mora and Roman Harper. Stay with us, everyone. Not only analysis but we also have our predictions we're serving up who we think will win tonight will it be the black and the gold the black and gold or the dallas cowboys stay with us everyone
I don't think. Welcome back, everyone. You are taking a live look as the Saints warm up and get ready for the Dallas Cowboys kickoff tonight is at 7.30. And here's a crazy stat for you. For the third consecutive game, the Saints are an underdog. The Cowboys are two and a half point favorites going into tonight's game. That leads us to prediction time. And one guy here likes the spread, Fletcher. Yeah, let's get our predictions right now. Don't go so heavy with the hate, Houdat Nation. I said the Saints were going to lose one of the first two without Drew Brees since they won in Seattle. I'm picking the Cowboys tonight, 28 to 20. But I think without Drew Brees, they still finish about five and one. I know I'm going to get hate rain down on me, Jim. Who do you like tonight? And why? I, I never bet against the Saints. I never. Okay, they're my team. All right. So I got the Saints winning 23 to 20. That's kind of a low-scoring game. But if it is a low-scoring game, especially on the part of the Cowboys gives the Saints a better chance because I don't think the Saints are going to score a lot of points tonight. Two teams I never pick no matter how good they are against the Saints. Falcons and Cowboys. I have the Saints winning 24-20. I think Jared Cook breaks out and I think Marshawn Lattimore comes up with a big play. Roman? Well, I am not like you, Fletcher. I thought the Cowboys may give them some trouble tonight, but I'm going with the Saints 28-27, to a close one. I think you're going to get a lot of doses of Alvin Kamara. He's got to come up big today. He's got to be the difference maker tonight in a big game. When everybody's watching, it's got to be on 41 tonight. All right, I hope the Saints win. I still think the Saints are going to the Super Bowl. He is Roman <laughs> Harper. He is Jim Mora. He's Sharif Ishaq. I am Fletcher Backle. Thank you for watching our Cox. Saints on six, countdown to kickoff coverage. Nightly news is next, then football night in America, and then the big game right here on WDSU. Enjoy it all, everyone.